Hey there guys and welcome to this first video in AWAX and GCI. In this video we're going to cover the basics but I like to call this discussion Bundy and Wedge Tail. Providing situational awareness, intercepts and saving lives or at least well virtual lives. So what is AWAX or AEWNC? AWAC stands for Airborne Warning and Control Services, while AEWNC stands for Airborne Early Warning and Control. They're basically both the same job, just two different terms. And their job is to provided by being a mobile air-based radar station. They typically gives a bigger picture than the ground-based radar system because it's in the air and we'll cover that in a moment however it has some strengths and weaknesses so what are the strengths and the weaknesses of AWAX well the weaknesses is that it has a shorter length of time active as the AWAX aircraft has to leave station to refuel and to cycle its crew for various reasons food that filled up the uh, lavatory dump tank, you know, that type of thing. It's vulnerable to air and ground attack and has to be protected by an escort and typically also a barrier cat. However, its strengths are fairly big. Its data is fed into the wider data net over Link 16 and other systems as its radar is extremely high above the ground, typically Angel's 25 to 35, it can see well beyond visual range and over a lot of line of sight blockers that ground based radar can't. And its radar typically is very difficult to notch, both because of the mode that the radar is in and because the radar is actually moving, so typically it's going to be changing to any targets that may be trying to notch it. So, what is GCI? Well, GCI stands for Ground Controlled Intercept. Its main role is what its name says. Ground Controlled Interception of hostile or potentially hostile assets through vectoring of its assigned fighters or its players to that target. It uses both the AWACS and ground based radar systems. It also provides situational awareness to keep players safe. So, in that case, why did we just look at what AWACS is? Well, because in our DCS environment, GCI also tends to mean that you're providing the AWACS part of the mission as well. So, your secondary role is to provide situational awareness to all allied players. Your tertiary pro or the like is to act as ATC at allied airfields. But it's important to remember that the last of these is just a secondary role. It's not important. If you're busy, ATC gets shoved to the side. Players can work out how to get around on the ground and if they're allowed to take off and land on their own. Or use the AI. So, how do we GCI then? Well, first off, we connect to the server with LOD ATC. You should be aware that the server has an, a, a license that allows one client to connect without buying a lot ATC license. Second, you connect to SRS as an external AWACS controller. Then you tune your primary radio to 271.0. On this frequency, you are Bundy. Make certain you have the COM card. You can find it on the website. The address is right here. Then uh, get good. I mean, you're meant to know everything straight off the bat, right? This is the internet. You're meant to be perfect without any extra training. Nah, seriously. Learning the art of being a controller takes time. Doesn't matter if it's for ATC, GCI, whatever. 
takes time, patience, and some frustration along the way. You're going to lose our crew, and they're likely going to get annoyed about it. And when they get annoyed, they're likely to blame you, even if it was their fault. So, best grow a thick-eyed and learn to ignore them when they go and vent. What you can do, however, is learn how to give situational awareness without overloading either the pilot, who's only human, his or her brain can only take so much information going in it and out of it at a time, and the comps, which are the pilot's only link to you, and he can't talk if you're talking. So, knowing when to do that. Well, as we just said, your job is to communicate SA, but not overload that mushy human brain. And that means learning when, where, and how it's best to communicate. So, you should always strive to put pauses into your comm calls. This gives other units a chance to communicate, with you or with each other if they're required to on your frequency because like all, all radios if you're broadcasting they can't you should always terminate a call to one player with the word break if you're immediately going to communicate with another so for example if you're communicating with magpie 11 and then you're immediately going to communicate with magpie 21 you would do a call like magpie 11 bra 123 for 25 angels 5 break magpie 21 bra 211 for 50 angels 15 this allows the units to know that the information after the breaks not for them So the next one is that you'll be giving picture calls and these are almost always generally given when the range is over 50 nautical miles unless somebody specifically requests a picture call. And you'll also be giving bra calls and these are always given when the range is below 50 nautical miles unless a picture call is requested. So how do we give the situational awareness? Well, as we just went through, we have two calls. The picture call and the bra call or also known as the intercept call and sometimes called the bogey dope. It's important to learn when to use each and how often to use each. So picture calls. Picture calls are designed to, as the name suggests, paint a picture of the current situation. So you will always give picture calls in true heading relative to the bullseye. Always. If there are a lot of groups, the comms should be paused for one to two seconds between them and it should all include all possible threat groups. They should only be given when the picture changes or if somebody requests them. And they are in the for given in the format of your call sign or just straight picture, new picture, single or multiple groups, the number of, of, of the group, the number of contacts, the bullseye, the heading from the bullseye, the range in nautical miles, angels in angels and cherubs and you may also if there's multiple groups call the formation they're in such as ladder box etc you'll need to send the nato brevity doc for more info on this we're not covering it at the moment an example of a picture call is this one so in this one we have five groups one two three four five so the call would be Bundy, picture, five groups. First group, single contact, bulls, 291 for 23, angels, 14, tracking east. Second group, single contact, bulls, 012, 25, angels, 9, tracking southwest. 
Third group, two contacts, Bulls 291 for 46, Angels 4, Cherubs 5, tracking southeast. Fourth group, two contacts, Bulls 311 for 56, Angels 21, tracking northwest. Fifth group, two contacts, Bulls 313 for 76, Angels 31, tracking northwest. You can also give the picture by cardinal points or the like, so long as you can paint the picture in a way that the groups are going to be logically able to be separated by the players who are hearing the call. So the second type of call we typically give is bearing range and altitude calls. They're designed to give players vectors from them to the target. They are always referenced on the player being given the call. They are almost always given when the range drops below 50 nautical miles. And they should generally be to the closest threat or to the assigned intercept which will most likely be the closest threat. They should include important aspect information like hot, cold, flanking in the direction of the flank. They should be given in true heading unless briefed otherwise. However, a lot of the Hornet pilots do not switch their heading to true, in which case you kind of need to find out and give it to them in magnetic. They are in the format of player call sign, hostile or bogey, bra on the heading, range, altitude and aspect. We'll typically cease once the range drops below 2 or 1 nautical mile unless requested otherwise because the signals merge and you just can't give them accurate information. When it happens you do a call like Bundy Shogun 11 merged or Shogun 11 Bundy merged. If the distance open up again then the bra should restart. And it should be given every 20 to 60 seconds depending on the overall picture and the workload. However if the range shortens you may need to increase the timing. An example. In this one we have our player who is Viper 11 and our target. So the example of this call would be Viper 11, Bra 123 for 5, Angels 16 flanking right. And he's flanking right because he's moving right at 90 degrees right to the player. If he was approaching he'd be hot, if he was moving away he'd be cold. We can also get pop-up groups. Now one as important aspect of communicating with your players is to let them know when a new possible threat appears on the radar. But otherwise the picture has not changed significantly enough for you to go through and do a completely new picture call. It's done through this, the pop-up group call. And it can be either given as an amendment to the picture call or as a bra call, depending on the circumstances. You may not actually know the flow of the target, however, when they pop up, because it takes a second for the radar to sweep and give you that aspect information. So you need to make a judgment call on if you wait a second or if they need the information right away. An example, if a group appears and is well away from any players, then you'd likely call Pop-up group, Bullseye 330 for 120, Angels 2. If they were close to the player Shogun 11, then you would use Shogun 11, Pop-up group, Bra 087 for 15, Angels 2, Hot. Another call that can be you, get requested of you is a bogey dope. If a player requests a bogey dope, they're asking you for a bra to the nearest threat, unless they specifically ask you other time. 